were sitting on my chest. <laughs> Lieutenant. The captain doesn't let us pass up requests from the commissioner's office. From what I've heard, you're not impressed by rank. I'm not. The captain is. Seen today's paper? A lot of this going around. It's like an epidemic. People don't think we're doing the job anymore, so they're doing it themselves. Well, they may have a point. I've got three cases on my desk I don't have a prayer of solving. You and every other cop. All of us. Mayor, the commissioner, even the governor feels we have to do something. So we're going to create a uh, special unit to take care of those cases that the regular police are unable to solve. I've recommended you to hit that unit, Lieutenant. Why? Because of its nature, it needs someone who goes by the book. Can I pick my own men? On one condition. The men you select will have to be ex-convicts on parole. Ex-convicts? They'll have the same powers and responsibilities as the regular police. You want me to turn ex-cons into cops? It's not as bizarre as it sounds, Lieutenant. Bizarre? It's crazy. Well, uh, do you have a better suggestion? Well, undercover men, informers... That's what we have now. It isn't working. What makes this work? The men you select will be known felons. That makes them trustworthy. To who? Pushers, books, other cons. People who give us information we can't get anywhere else. <sighs> I'm sorry, Mr. Ellsworth. This fish isn't biting. Lieutenant. How's your leg? According to your medical file, you took a bullet in your right leg. That was eight months ago. Still, a man your age out in the street every day? We want our men to give the public 100%. I always have. Yeah, well, I'll uh, process your retirement papers personally. I'm not ready to retire. It's a departmental decision. Physical disability. How are the fish now, Lieutenant? Hungry enough to take the bait? Happy recruiting. Yes, ma'am, you would be surprised how many people overlook locks when they buy a new house. Well, we didn't want somebody breaking in. Well, you got a right to be nervous, lady. I mean, I hate to say it, but the world is full of crooks these days. You gotta have your valuables locked up, or like that. They're gone. Oh, well, we do. There's a safe in the master bedroom. We keep everything in it. Well, I hope it ain't one of them wall safes. You know, behind the picture? Well, that's the first place a good burglar looks. No, it's in the floor. Well, that's better. Yeah, that, that's much better. Um, is that lock all right? Perfect. We won't have to replace that one. Excuse me, but these gentlemen want to see you. Lieutenant Kessler needs a few minutes of your time. The police? Uh, well, they often call me in to consult on you know, locks and things. Please. Barbara, you could go to jail for switching securities. I could make a fortune. <laughs> I'll need 50000 up front. I'll sell my jewelry. Are you sure you want to go through with this? Jimmy boy, I'm as greedy as the next person. Barbara, you're my kind of woman. Whoever it is, send them away.
What are you guys doing here? Lieutenant Kessler wants to see you. Nice job, Lester. Man's got to practice. Besides, it's better than flying. Well, you can relax now. We'll do the... Lieutenant Kessler wants a word with you. I apologize for the rouse, gentlemen, but it was the quickest way to assemble this distinguished group. Some idiot in the commissioner's office just came up with a brilliant way to reduce the crime rate. He wants to turn ex-cons like you into cops. I had the same reaction. <laughs> I'll tell you something even funnier. You all qualify for this new unit. Come off it, Kessler. Each of you is on parole, each has committed a non-violent crime, and each of you has a specialized skill which could be useful. Kessler, just because you busted us doesn't give you the right to lay this kind of garbage on us, you know. Yeah, why would we want to do a thing like that? Well, if by some miracle this whole thing works, your uh, sentences will be wiped off the books. Like they never happened? like they never happen. What do you say? I stick it in your ear. Then step on it. Lester? Well, I don't know, Lieutenant. I just wouldn't feel right being a, you know, what would my friends say? Well, is there any way I can convince you gentlemen to at least take a crack at this? Uh-huh. To make it your dying wish. <laughs> Well, I appreciate the honesty. After all, you guys don't owe me anything. Just our records. Sure. Sergeant. We show these gentlemen out. O'Neill, James T. Bunko. Barbara Warren is willing to sign a complaint that you try to con her out of 50 big ones. She was really teed off when she found out you were after her money. And not a body. Bauer, Victor, violation of parole. Come on, Lieutenant, I'm a hard-working guy. Oh, yeah. Only a P.O. thinks you're working in your brother-in-law's flower shop. You disappoint me, Vic. One of the best second story men in the business, and you take a job as a locksmith. That's cheating. Yeah, maybe. But it's a hell of a lot easier with a key. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. White, Lester, auto theft. The well, way you wrote me in with the rest of these fellas, I'm as clean as a turkey after Thanksgiving. Come on, let's do everything. Come on. Any of these keys fit that car we found in your garage? The one with the serial numbers filed off? I don't know what you're talking about, Lieutenant. I wouldn't leave the straight and air. I'd, it'd break my mother's heart. She must need a transplant by now. Now, these charges can be some terrible mistake, or they can send you right back where you belong. It's up to you. You're sandbagging us, Kessler. How do you think I got here? Hey, if we say yes, how long do we have to do it? Well, until we see if it makes any sense, or uh, until somebody shoots your head off. Do we get to carry guns? Guns? I wouldn't give you misfit slingshots. Well, the ship's about to sail, gentlemen. Hmm. Well, it pains me to say this. But we are now a team. The Odd Squad. He shafted us. He really shafted us. I don't think he likes it any better than we do. Now, what makes you so relaxed? Can't do nothing about it. Admit it. 
We all had something going, and we got nailed. Any other way, we'd be back in the pokey. Why, you're the kind of guy who walks into a room full of horse manure and smiles because you know somewhere in there there's got to be a pony. A man comes up to me and says, Lester, you did a little police work for me. I'm going to wipe your slate clean. All we got to do is look out for each other, and everything's going to be all right. Now I suppose you're going to jump up and shout off for one and one for all. Now why would I want to do a thing like that? No, I can't give you guns, but I can show you something about hand-to-hand -hand combat. If it's all the same to you, I'd rather talk my way out of trouble. Well, what happens if you can't? I'll run. Come here, Bowie. Why me? Because you're the prettiest. Take a swing at me. Come on, Kessler, I've seen this routine before. Why don't you just throw me and get it over with? Come on, Bauer, take a swing. You might get lucky. I taught hand-to-hand -hand at Paris Island for three years. There may be hope for a shed. <laughs> <laughs> Golden boy of pro basketball. Signs a contract for a million dollars a year and people scream he's underpaid. What do you have? Pretty much what you read in the papers. Newkirk finishes the game with a career high of 43 points. He leaves the arena around 11.30. He was found like that three hours later. His wallet was empty and his watch and college championship ring gone. What don't the papers have? A couple of kids hanging around for autographs. Saw him take off with a girl. Description? Blue eyes, brown hair, about 17, 18. That's all? That's it. You're not starting us off with an easy one. If it were easy, we wouldn't need you. It's always nice to be needed. The one on the left is Newkirk's father. He's making noises like Wyatt Earp. He wants to get the varmints that beat up his kid. Unfortunately, he has a gun with a permit to carry it. We'll take it away from him. Lieutenant, he hasn't used it. Yet. Gentlemen, this is Lieutenant Kessler, Sir Calvin Newkirk, mm -hmm. Arthur Haberman. Lieutenant. Mr. Haberman owns the team, Lieutenant. Does your son have a steady girl, Mr. Newkirk? No, not really. He dates, but only casually. Who is he close to on the team? Well, he roomed with Reggie Brindle on the road but I wouldn't call him close. Lieutenant, if Pete needed somebody to talk to, he'd talk to me. If he was in shape to tell me what happened, I wouldn't be standing here now answering pointless questions. That permit you have, Mr. Newkirk. What about it? It allows you to carry a firearm within the city limits. If that firearm goes off, you'll be answering a lot of questions. None of them pointless. I hope your son does pull through. We'll have something concrete very soon, I promise. Good day, gentlemen. Why don't you go on home, Cal, and get some rest? They'll call you if there's any change. He could die. 24 years old. Mr. Haberman. 
Who's that? What are you doing here? I was thinking of buying season tickets. Wanted to pick the best seats. But now I don't know. You're a star player in the hospital. Chances for a playoff look pretty slim with Newkirk out. Let's go to my office. No. Offices have secretaries. What is this, a convention? Show it. Vegas skin? <laughs> what difference does it make? Once it goes through your books, it all comes out clean. Until I have to explain where all that money came from. So? You sold a few extra hot dogs last week. I never should have come to you. You're in a high-risk business, Mr. Haberman. New league, weak team, one draw. Who else was going to keep you afloat? The 25% of my team. Oh, well, we're not in it for nothing. We're businessmen. Businessmen? Well, I think some of your businessmen put Newkirk in the hospital. <laughs> You've been reading too many bad novels, Arthur. We don't do that anymore. Now, these days, it's all uh, tax write-offs, stock options. Besides, why would we put Newkirk out of commission? It hurts us as much as you, and we have an investment to protect. That's my one consolation, that you're going right down the tubes with me. Since we lost Newkirk, you could shoot a cannon in here. Be lucky if you hit a referee. Arthur. If you need another loan. Thanks, but I never make the same mistake twice. Sounds like he means it. He'll be back. You're sure that Newkirk can't make you? He never even saw us. We have to hurry. I tee off in 20 minutes. Where's your new office? Charming. Hey, you can't meet at headquarters. Anybody makes your men, they lose their value. Department 2F. A 24-hour answering service on the phone. No mail service, huh? Kessler. There's a temporary addition to the unit. Who? Oh, Arnie Kogan. That girl Newkirk went off with could have been a prostitute. Hogan knows every hustler in the city. I won't take him. You have him, Lieutenant. Make good use of him. You really enjoy sticking it to me, don't you? I'll wait for a progress report. Gentlemen, who's he? Yeah, he's been sitting there like that ever since we got here. It's giving me the willies. Allow me to introduce Arnold Kogan, a more properly ex-Sergeant Kogan of the Vice Squad. He's a cop? Was, Lester. Was. He was, uh, retired from the force three years ago. I don't get it. It's a problem of economics. Mr. Kogan... Ex-Sergeant Kogan wasn't happy with his salary as a policeman. So he decided to augment his income. Now, most cops moonlight, they get a job as a security guard or a gas station attendant. But that was beneath Ex-Sergeant Kogan. He felt that the shakedown was far less time-consuming and far more profitable. And he wanted to keep his spare time free to spend with his son. You see much of your son anymore, Arnie? Take a good look at him, gentlemen. Because he's a hundred times worse than any of you. You may be crooks, but at least you're honest about it. You didn't hide behind a badge, you didn't smear the police department, and you didn't break some kid's heart. <laughs> Roy! Welcome to the unit, Arnie.
All right, now we get down to business. We have a case. Pete Newkirk. The basketball player? Uh-huh. He was seen leaving the arena with a girl. Brown hair, blue eyes, about 17, 18. We don't know who she was. High school sweetheart, casual date. Maybe a working girl. Newkirk with a hooker? Maybe. Doesn't figure. He's the all-American boy. Maybe she was an all-American hooker. That's where ex-Sergeant Kogan comes in. He'll check out to see if any of his friends were working the area that night. So what do I do, take the night off? Well, nobody seems to know much about Newkirk. So here's the search warrant. You and Lester go over to his house and see what you can find. Now, this girl might have been a groupie. If she was, Newkirk's roommate, Reggie Brindle, might know her. Find out. How? That's your problem. We'll meet back here tonight around 11. Come on, fellas, move. Let's go. Didn't have to bring it up about the kid. Don't tell me you volunteered for this. They promised me they'd clean up my record and give me a recommendation to another force. You had a reputation for using your hands, Arnie. I'd hate to see you fall back into bad habits. Come on, Shirley. Your man told me you were in the arena that night. He's wrong. I took the night off. Don't give me that. You haven't had a night off since V.E. Day. Tell me, I don't know anything. I... Shirley, you're next. Back to the same old bad habits again, huh, Arnie? You want to press charges? No, just, just get him out of here. You heard the lady. Come on. Will you just look at what he's done? Yeah, I saw him come up here. I got curious. Well, I'm glad you did. If he's not on the force anymore, how come he still asks questions? Like what? Like he want to know if I was working the arena Monday night. Oh, yeah, there was a mugging. Pete Newkirk. He left with a girl after the game. So what's that to Kogan? The owner of the team offered a reward for information. He must be after that. Uh. You know something, Shirley? You keep that dirt off my back? You can go to the bank on it. Okay. Okay, these two guys come to me before the game, right? And they offer me 200 bucks to pick up Newkirk and take him to the Hollywood Hills. Did you? No way. I mean, that's a little too freaky even for me. You remember what they looked like? Yeah. Yeah, one was uh, real squatty. You know, one of those guys as wide as he is tall. And the other one was a, a tall blonde dude. The biggest hands I've ever seen. I couldn't take my eyes off of him. He kept uh, clenching him the whole time like he was uh, strangling a chicken. Thanks, Shirley. I'll make sure Kogan doesn't come around again. Stay clean. Yeah, you too, Kelsey. The old cop, bad cop routine still works. Only because you're so believable. Yeah. You know, if she didn't pick up Newkirk, someone else did. 200 bucks is 200 bucks. That doesn't sound like your everyday mugging. You seen the kid lately? Uh-huh. How's he doing? He's gonna be a good cop. Unlike his father. You got a friendly shoulder to lean on? Uh-huh. You? Uh-huh. Keep an eye on him, will you, Roy? Believe it. I feel ridiculous. Why? This is the first job I've ever done with a search warrant in my pocket. With my luck, I'll probably get busted for doing something legal.
change in your son's condition, Mr. Newkirk? No, he's still critical. To your knowledge, have the police made any progress in their investigation? As far as I know, they are exactly where they were when Pete was found. He's been reading our reports. Do you believe that Arthur Haberman's offer of a $10,000 reward will result in any further information? I certainly hope it will. I'd like to take this opportunity to offer my own $10,000 reward with one stipulation. And what is that, Mr. Newkirk? That the information be brought to me and not the police. What will you do with it? That's my business. Mr. Newkirk, are you saying that you intend to take the law into your own hands? Why not? Everybody else does. What I am saying is that when the... That's just what we need. Oh, come on, Roy. He's just giving the department a little zits. He's not gonna follow through. I saw him at the hospital. I think he means everything he said. All right, maybe you're right, but it doesn't have anything to do with us. No, what if somebody gives him a phony lead? He takes his gun and shoots some innocent citizen. So it's a little tough on the innocent citizen, but it still doesn't get in the way of our investigation. Unless he gets a real tip and butts in. That'll blow whatever we have going. We don't solve the case, and you don't get your free cigar. Anything? Yeah. He's broke. It's in hock. He's got loans out with practically every bank in town. He's borrowed against his house, his car. Can you beat that? A man signs himself a contract for a million dollars, and he ain't got nothing to show for it? And I go to all the trouble of shorting out his burglar alarm system, and then I find a letter from the company cutting off his service. If he lives, that hospital's gonna have a hell of a time collecting their bill. Anyone who makes a million dollars a year doesn't have to borrow against his car. Unless he hasn't been paid. Ready for the pre-game ceremony, sugar? That'd be at this hour. Don't think I'll have a curfew. Hey! You Reggie Brindle? Reggie, he's got a gun. Yeah, and I'm gonna use it. Doing what you did to my little girl. Thought your parents were in Buffalo. They are. Where is she? Who? My daughter! You don't look old enough to have a daughter that's old enough for him. You keep out of this. I meant it as a compliment. I meet a lot of people. What's her name? Phyllis. I don't know any Phyllis. Brown hair, blue eyes, about 17 or 18. About 17 or 18. Don't you know how old your daughter is? She's 17 now, she's about to be 18, and don't you try to mix me up. Okay, okay. You were seen talking to her outside the arena three nights ago. Who's Phyllis? Will you shut up? It wasn't me, mister. Who was it? I, I don't know. I want the man who sullied my daughter, and as far as I know, it was you. It was Newkirk. The guy got beat up? Yeah. According to the newspapers, he doesn't go in for that sort of thing, picking up girls. I mean, you guys all said so. We were trying to protect him. His image, you know. He's a big deal with the kids. We figured he got hurt enough. If you're lying to protect yourself... I saw him talking to her. Only she doesn't call herself Phyllis. She never did like that name. She uses Ginger now. Have you got any idea where she is? Well... Please. Please. I gotta find her. For her mother's sake. Tell him, you big stiff. When there isn't a game, she usually hangs out in a bar. The Big Dipper on Hollywood Boulevard. A bar? Thank you, son. Young woman, take my advice. Put your clothes on and do something useful with your life. Be a dental assistant. Listen, some guy just picked me up and laid a line on me about being a friend of Newkirk's. 
He knows I picked him up the night he got hit. So he didn't act like a cop, but these days, who can tell? I sent him over to the Delmonico. No vacancy. Thanks. I'll, uh, I'll try someplace else. Hey! Hey! James T. O'Neill. He's on parole. Why all the questions about Newkirk? I'm a fan. What are you after? An autograph. Nice night for a swim. Hey! All right, I'll split it with you. Makes sense. The reward! The ten grand that Haberman was offered for information on Newkirk's meeting. What'd you find out? Uh, somebody said he came here. He didn't. What are you gonna do now? Go home. And? Stay there till I dry. I had a chat with a couple guys. Did you ever try having a conversation hanging upside down over a swimming pool? Was one of them short and pudgy? The other tall, blonde, with big hands? Friends of yours? Probably the guys that did the job on Newkirk. A groupie named Ginger set him up. Can you make him? Yeah, I recognize Pudgy. A guy named Frankie Hatcher. Now, how would you know someone like Frankie Hatcher? Not by choice, believe me. I had a scam going a couple of years ago. Till I found out the Mark was one of those syndicate guys. Hatcher was one of the fellows used to hang around him. He works for Michael Dominic. Now, where do I know that name from? He's a very important man in the construction business, Vic. At least that's what his tax returns say. The organized crime force has another opinion. You mean that we've been playing hide-and-seek with the big boys? Now, prison's beginning to look better and better all the time. Fellas, you're cops, remember? You just made a major breakthrough. You should feel very proud of yourselves. Yeah. I'd rather feel safe. You up to another assignment? Only if I'm covered by health and welfare. Find a way to keep Newkirk's father and his gun off the streets until we grab Hatcher. If that's all, you've earned a rest. In that case, I'd like to put in for my vacation. <laughs> Come in, please. <clears throat> Lieutenant, good to see you again. Mr. Haberman. Anything new on the case? As a matter of fact, there is. We think we know who beat up Newkirk. Oh, congratulations. So, so, sit down. Please, sit down. They uh, work for that organization we're not allowed to mention. I'm afraid I don't follow you. Well, organized crime's gotten respectable, Mr. Haberman. Big business in books and movies. They even have their own anti-defamation league. But why would they want to beat up Pete? Same question occurred to me. I hope you don't expect me to supply the answer, Lieutenant. You signed a pretty expensive contract with Newkirk, didn't you? Well, I, I didn't have much choice. We were in a bidding war with the other league. And Pete was the hottest thing in college basketball. But he's been worth every penny I paid him. You did pay him, then. What do you mean? Well, he's very heavily in debt, as if he borrowed against money that was going to come in. That's quite possible. Even though he's getting a million dollars a year? <laughs> million dollar contracts don't uh, necessarily mean a million dollars in cash, Lieutenant. There are all sorts of bonuses attached. The uh, number of points scored, the attendance records, the way the team finishes up in the standings. Well, Newkirk was having an incredible year. The team's in second place, and they started to draw. Newkirk's been getting his bonuses. Well, I'm sure you can prove that. Of course. You won't have any objections to opening your books? Lieutenant Kessler, I'm negotiating a very substantial television contract. 
If it were to be made public exactly how much I've lost these past two years, I wouldn't get a third of what I was asking. Well, I won't tell anyone. You won't have to. Once those books are open, there'll be no way to close them. Believe me, I've seen it happen before. It's not that difficult to get a court order. I'm fighting for my financial life, and I don't see how poring over my books can help you solve Pete's mugging. If that's all it was, Mr. Haberman. Think about it. Haberman, what are you doing here? I wouldn't be here if it wasn't important. Open the gate. I did have Newkirk beaten. And now Kessler wants to see my books. He knows there's a connection between us. But he can't prove it. I've got to work on that stroke. Will you stop playing and listen? With all your dirty money flowing through my books, it looks like I'm making a fortune. I can't tell Kessler I don't get to keep any of that money, that I have to pay it all into one of your dummy corporations. No, Arthur, you can't tell him that. Then how do I explain why I haven't paid Newkirk his bonuses? How much do you owe him? 350000 All right. We'll advance you the money. What good will that do? Just put in a special bank account, backdate the books, say you're going to pay it all at the end of the season. What do you get out of it? 75% of the team. I'd rather see us both in jail. <laughs> Arthur, you're being emotional. With Newkirk out for the rest of the year, you won't be able to give the tickets away. You'll be bathing in red ink. That's why you had him beaten like that. You know I don't have enough money to ride out another losing season. But we have. And just think, when he comes back next year, everyone will be cheering the courageous young athlete. You'll pack the arena. We'll all turn a nice profit. I told you once, Dominic. No deal. Arthur, I don't like to threaten you. It's not my nature. But I have a board of directors to answer to. And when they ask me if we control your team, I'd better say yes. Do you understand? All right. I'll send Hatch around to pick up your books. When we're finished, you'll have the healthiest team in pro basketball. You know, you really should take up golf, Arthur. It's very relaxing. So me and my kid are driving home from my sister's. Uh... We pass this filling station, it's uh, last Monday, about 11.30. And all of a sudden, the kid gets all excited because he spots his car sitting by the pumps with 74 MVP on it. Yeah, well, that's my son's license number. <laughs> the kid gets all excited. I mean, he's got to have an autograph, right? So we have to drive into the station, and sure enough, Pete Newkirk. <laughs> but before we can even get out of the car, these two guys come up to him and start talking to your son arguing, really, and, and all of a sudden one of them shoves your son and they all get in the car and they drive off. Did you recognize these men if you saw them again? Well, you see, that's the thing. I think I've seen them before. I think they hang out at this bar on Terminal Island. Yeah, we've been camped here for two hours. They'll show, Mr. Newkirk. It's their steady hangout. Mr. Newkirk. Hey! 
Mr. Newkirk. Either way, I think I'm gonna get killed. How do you like it? Close? Kogan. What is this? I'm working my way through Barber's College. What do you want? I want some information. I got nothing for you, schmutz. Now that's no way to get a nice, smooth shave, Eddie. Ow. Oh, sorry about that. How about that information? What do you want? Frankie Hatcher owes me some money. Now, where do I collect? I haven't got a clue. Hey. Hey, 
Eddie Cogan. Next one's gonna be a juggler, Eddie. Okay, okay. 244, 39th Street. 244, 39th Street. And you did not get it here. Right. Tip's been taken care of. Oh, thanks. Hello? Lester? Jimmy, what's got into you? You almost killed me and Vic. Never mind that. Listen, I'm at the Pinewood Bowling Alley on Slauson. This is no time to go bowling. Lester. Grab whatever marbles you got and listen to me. Two very mean-looking guys started tailing me the minute I dropped Newkirk off at his house. I couldn't go back to the apartment. I tipped the operation. Don't worry about a thing. We'll be right down. Two of them syndicate fellas, plus Jimmy and two, are bowling alley on Slauson. Lester, how are you at throwing punches? I ain't had much experience. Well, I'm afraid you're going to get some. Come on. Him too. You boys are violating your parole, do you know that? Shouldn't be associating with one another. It won't happen again. Not if we pull you in, it won't. What were you doing with Mr. Newkirk? You guys can't hassle us. We're... Lester. You're what, Lester? Nothing. That's right. You're an ex-con, Lester. And that adds up to nothing. You were saying? Hey, do me a favor, will you? Try the other side. This one's spoken for. We're working on the Newkirk mugging. And when we see a known felon consorting with the victim's father, we want to know why. I thought I knew that Chick Newkirk left the arena with the night he got hit. He wasn't hurt. You wouldn't be shuffling us, would you? Because it could be very painful if you did. <clears throat> Play it clean, boys. Hey, what's the use of being cops if we can't tell anybody? I'm gonna tell someone. Who? Kessler. How's it going, Felcher? Not bad. You feel like a little workout? I've been waiting for somebody to ask. You're on. Bet you arrested some ex-cons today. Well, one of them's hanging around Newkirk's old man. Well, you're a little rough on him. Okay, so what? Well, they can't fight back. So what's your point? It's coming. <coughs> Lieutenant Kessler? Yeah. Telephone. Coming. Learn to be more gentle in your work, Felcher. You feel a lot better. Kessler. Arthur Haberman, Lieutenant. I'm still working on the court order, Mr. Haberman. You won't need it. What changed your mind? I just had a long talk with Michael Dominic. I'd like to tell you all about it. Where are you? At the arena. I'm on my way. <laughs> Thank you. 
trying to call the cops. Dominic ain't gonna like that. He was gonna spill the whole thing. Now what could I do? I'll finish the other one. Yeah. Come on, Frankie. Somebody must have heard his shots by now. I'm not gonna wait around. How is he? They won't know till they take the x-rays. Did he say anything? He made those goons who killed Haberman. Good. We'll put out an ABB. It's out. Haberman called me. He wanted to talk about his involvement with Michael Dominic. Dominic? Well, there'd be an awful lot of commendations if we... Put him away. But we still have a shot at it. The connection's in Haberman's books. Where are they? Probably in Dominic's hot little hands. And we're right back where we started. Not if we hit Dominic before he has a chance to clean him up. Lieutenant, that requires a court order. We'll get one. And well, I'd have to touch base with a commissioner on something this big. Ellsworth! If we don't move now, those books will read like Alice in Wonderland. Look, we'll move when the commissioner says so. And when we do, we're going to use real cops. What about my men? Well, they've done a fine job. I'll make sure that the commissioner is made aware of it. And that's it? Look, Lieutenant, I'm sure you're aware of the need for professionals in something like this. The same professionals who couldn't find a clue in this case to save their own pensions? I'm going to need a written report from you. I have it on my desk by tomorrow morning. Now, look, Ellsworth. One of my men has just been sent to the hospital. And another one was roughed up by the same goons and almost had his head blown off by some irate citizen. Now you want me to tell them they're not good enough to finish what they started? Well, who knows? Maybe after what they've been through, they'll uh, burst into applause, huh? Let's we'll see. Kessler, you and your unit are officially off this case. Send me a memo.
Mr. Newkirk. How's your son? He's conscious, but I'm glad to hear it. Did he tell you what happened? No. He didn't tell you he was picked up by some groupie named Ginger? You know about her? Mr. Newkirk, we're so far ahead of you on this case, you'd have to shoot half the city to catch up. Lieutenant, I've got to do something. Then go home. And thank God, or the doctors, or whatever it is you believe in this, your son's all right. Oh, hold on. I, I've got a permit for that. Make a formal complaint. I know how you feel. But if you follow up this case, I'll throw you in a cell so fast you won't know what happened. Clear? Is that clear? Yeah. Stay clean, Mr. Newkirk. Hitting me on the head of the fact they spotted me tailing them. Well, it only goes to prove one thing, Ernie. What's that? You're getting old. <laughs> yes, you have definitely lost it, Kogan. From now on, you stay in the apartment and answer the phone. <laughs> you guys will be great at funerals. You got the right amount of dignity. Hey, Lieutenant. Just in time for the toast. Here's to Ernie Kogan, the hardest head in the West. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel? Stupid. No, no, Hatcher's a stupid one. If he'd hit you someplace else, he might have done some damage. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lieutenant, you gonna give us a night off or do we have to bust Dominic right away? Take the night off. Well, when do we hit him? We don't. What do you mean? Mr. Ellsworth's gonna use real cops. Here's to Mr. Ellsworth. Judge Blaustein, Roy Kessler. Fine, sir, fine. How are you? I need a search warrant, Judge. Michael Dominic's place. Hey, a coffee pot. Yeah, I bought it. With your own money? Uh-huh. Oh, you'd have to do that. Oh, we could have ripped one off for you. It's nice to know some things never change. Did you get it? Of course. Those guys at the Zoning Commission don't ask enough questions. Let's take a look. Grab yourself a cup of coffee. Compliments to Lieutenant. Hey, you didn't have to buy one of these. I could have written... I know. I know. Michael Dominic's estate. He remodeled two years ago and had to file plans with the Zoning Commission. It's lucky for us he's such a law-abiding citizen. The place is surrounded by an eight-foot wall topped with barbed wire. There's an intercom at the gate, but by the time we announce ourselves and get to the main house, They'll have gotten out with the books. What's that area out back? That's a helicopter pad. And once we get inside, somebody has to make sure Dominic doesn't get to that helicopter. First, we gotta get over this wall. Well, that's Lester's department. I got everything I need. I'll take the helicopter. You? Volunteering? Sounds like the easiest part of the whole job. This room with the electrical lines running through. Mm -hmm. What do you figure's in there? Office machines. Like what? Typewriters? No, it's too much juice for that. Copy machines, maybe. Maybe a paper shredder? Yeah, maybe. Well, in that case, we better knock it out of commission. I ain't doing much. It's all yours, Lester. What are you doing here? You released me. Grab a seat and we'll fill you in. The books might be in Dominic's bedroom. Can you get up there? Oh, I can get in there. What does that leave me? Quiet afternoon right here. here. Turning down an extra pair of hands. You're in no shape, Boy. To... I'm going. <sighs> okay. One more thing. I don't use these. Oh, you don't want to feel left out, do you, Vic? Everybody else is going to have one. Hey, I told you once I'd rather talk my way out of trouble. That'll save wear and tear on your voice. Shall we? <laughs> Pleasure 
Lester, are you sure that thing's gonna work? Well, what do you mean, well? I mean, well, I never drove up one of them things before. Swell. charges is Norman Ellsworth, special assistant to the police commissioner. We're deeply indebted to Captain Frank Morris and the other men who made this arrest possible. Just case, although other men. Commissioner knows about us. My mother, she would be proud if she knew. Well, my family would disown me. Committed to day and night. The police force of this city has again proved, in my opinion, that they are giving the city the best in law enforcement. It's now the time to ask for a raise. And along with the support of the community, we intend to continue being an effective deterrent against all criminal elements in this city. Say good night, Norman. Well, gentlemen, the coffee break is over. We have another case. Oh. Now, of course, this is completely voluntary. Anytime you decide you'd rather sit in a cell. 
When I was hanging from that helicopter, a cell looked pretty good. Well, think of it this way. In 20 years, you'll all be eligible for retirement. Thank you.